In this video, we will show you how to build a simple voice flow chat bot, which uses the example function to fetch data from the knowledge base and send it to the Gemini Pro model, which returns the optimized response. The whole process does not consume tokens and will save the cost when using other models like ChatGPT. You can log on to your voice flow account. If it is the first time, you may see a default template and you can delete it. This is what you may see afterwards. We are going to build a very simple demo chat bot to show how to use the voice flow function to get knowledge base chunks and send the chunks to Gemini API, which will return the answer to the user's question. Let us first go to our knowledge base. On the left menu, click on the content icon. We then click the knowledge. We will add some data sources. Click the button and you may upload files or use URL. Let us choose the URL because we will pull data from a website. Let us go to this gym's website, which provides personal training, group classes, and other sports services. We will use this website as an example to answer users' questions on their services. Let us go back to VoiceFlow. We paste the URL of the website and click the Import button. VoiceFlow will pull the data from the website. After it is done, it shows the green mark on the status. We click the Add Data Source button to add another URL of the website. Click the Import button and Voice Flow will add the data from this URL. After it is done, we will repeat the steps and add the third URL of the website. After the data is synced, we can see the green mark on the status column. So far, we have imported the data from the website for this demo. If needed, you can put as many URLs as desired and let Voice Flow to pull the data from the website, which will be saved as chunks in the knowledge database. This does not consume tokens. Next, let us click on the functions button on the left. We will use a function from voice flow, which can fetch knowledge base chunks. Let us go to the voice flow developers docs page. There is a doc showing how to write a function. We scroll the web page down until we see the example functions. In the section of example functions, we see extract chunks from a knowledge base response and click on the link to download the function example. We will use the newly added function step to load this function, which will fetch knowledge base chunks related to the user's question. After the file is downloaded, let us go back to our voice flow project. On the functions window, you can either create a new function or import a function from a file. Let us click on the icon to import the function we have downloaded. Click the browse button. On the pop-up window, we select the function file. Click the open button to upload the file. And then, click the import button to import the file. Now we have the function, which has successfully uploaded, and is ready to use. Let us click the function and see the details. There are input arguments. The function can fetch data from the knowledge base and return the response with targeted chunks. It can also catch errors. If you are not familiar with JavaScript, it is okay. We do not need to know the details to use this function. Let us go to line 48. In the filtered chunks, there is a lot of data, which we do not need. We only need the data of content. So we remove all the parameters and enter content. We need to map the data to content. This will give us much cleaner data. The function will return the chunks and we will send them to Gemini Pro to process the data. That is the only thing we need to change. The last part of the function is the return, which returns the output structure, including the error message and the data we need. In the beginning of the function, we have two input variables. On the right, it lists the two input variables. One is the API key and the other is the user's question. It also shows the output variable, which is the cleaned underscore chunks containing our data. After we have configured the knowledge base and the function, let us go back to the voice flow project. On the left icons, we select the dev and drag the functions block and drop it on the canvas. On the right column, we click the drop down arrow to select the function we need. After the function has been loaded, we can see the input variable mapping. We need to input the API key and the user's question so the function can take these variables and process them at the back end. We can create two variables. One is to store our API key and pass it to the function. The other is to save the user's question and pass it to the function to process. As I have already created these two variables, I am going to select them from the variable list. Enter API and select the variable VF API key. We also select the question variable and enter it here. I have created a variable chunks to save the output data and let us select and enter it. Until now, we have mapped two input variables as the function's input arguments and an output variable to save the data returned by the function. 
Next, we are going to set our API key to the variable using a JavaScript block. Let us drop a JavaScript block on the canvas and name it as API key. Instead of the JavaScript block, you may use a set block. Anyway, I prefer to use the JavaScript block. On the right, we click and select the variable to store the API key. We are going to get the knowledge base API key. On the left icons, we select and click on the integration icon. Then, click the Knowledge Base API button. We can see the primary key. Click the Copy API Key button to make a copy. We go back to the project and paste the API key between the quotation marks in the JavaScript block. We do a little arrangement to make it look better. Then, we connect the API key block with the function block. So far, we have connected the API key with the function. Next, we will need to connect the question variable with the function as the second input. We are going to use a text block to ask the user to input his question. We enter, what is your question? We will use a capture block to capture the user's reply. We capture the entire user reply and save it in the variable question. Next, we connect the capture block with the API key block. Until now, the function can receive both input variables and is ready to run a test. Let us click the arrow to start a test. I am interested in the cycle class the gym offers. So let me enter the question, what can I learn from a cycle class? As we can see, the function has fetched chunks from the knowledge base and returned them, so the output data has been saved in our variable. The maximum number of the returned chunks is 5, which has been defined in the function. You may change it as needed. This test shows that the function has successfully accepted the input variables and returned the data we need. Next, we will send the data to Gemini. Let us drop an API block on the canvas and rename it as Gemini API. In order to make API calls to Gemini, we need to configure the API block to populate it with some parameters, such as the API key, headers, and body, which we can find in the Gemini documentation. Let us log on to the Gemini account with Google AI Studio. If you have not registered yet, you may watch our previous video, which shows how to do that. Let us click the documentation button. On the docs page, we click the REST API on the left. Now we are on the quick start page. Let us scroll down. We are going to use multi-turn conversations because this will allow us to input prompts and we can ask Gemini to provide the answer according to the chunks we send to the API. As shown here, it has a role user where we can input the user's question. There is a role model which is not shown in the normal conversation mode. With this role model, we are now able to input the prompt to let Gemini use the data we provide. We also need other parameters listed here. We need the URL to make API calls. Let us select the URL and make a copy. Let us get back to the voice flow. We change the API status to post and paste the URL. Next, we are going to get the API key. On the Google AI Studio, we click the button Get API Key. Click the API key and click the copy button to copy the API key. You can use a variable to save the Gemini API key. But I am going to just paste it at the end of the URL. On the header section, click the plus sign to add a pair of key and value. Back on the Gemini Quick Start page, we select the content type and make a copy. We paste it in the first box. We then copy the application slash JSON and paste it in the second box. In the body section, we click on the plus sign and click the raw radio button. On the Gemini Quick Start page, we select this part to make a copy and paste it on the API block. With all the parameters, we are ready to test the Gemini API. We click on the Send Request button to test it. The request has been sent to the Gemini model, waiting for the response. Here we go. It shows 200 OK, which means the API call has been successful. The text key has the value we need, which is the answer from Gemini. We also can see other parts of the response data. Let us understand the data structure of the response. We have the candidates array. It contains the content key. In the values of the content, there is a key of parts. The parts is an array. It contains the key text and the value of the Gemini answer. After understanding the data structure, we will extract the answer from the response. In the capture response section, we click on the plus sign to add a pair of key and value. According to the data structure, we extract the answer from the response as shown here. We are going to use a variable to save the answer. In the variable list, we select the answer and enter it. We have finished the configuration of the API block, which can make API calls and extract the data from the response. In the next step, we are going to display the answer to the user.
we drop a text block onto the canvas, and we simply put the answer variable to show the Gemini answer to the user. We connect the Gemini API block with the text block. In the Gemini API block, we will input the user question. In the first role user part, we place the variable question to replace the original text. This question variable is the same as the one we have used in the knowledge base function. So the user question will be sent to Gemini to get the answer. In the role model part, we will put the prompt containing the chunks returned from the knowledge base so that Gemini can synthesize the answer based on the data we send. We will create a variable called prompt to contain the instructions and the chunk data so Gemini can understand what it is directed to do. We will use the API key JavaScript block to set the value of the variable prompt which I have created. The prompt has instructions. It says, you are an AI FAQ assistant. Information will be provided to help answer the user questions. Always summarize your response to be as brief as possible and be extremely concise. Your responses should be fewer than a couple of sentences. Do not reference the material provided in your response. The information is the following. We will add the information later. Of course, you may use your own prompt, which may best fit your needs. In the next step, we are going to use a JavaScript block to concatenate the prompt and the chunk data. In the code, we use chunk substring to remove the square bracket at the first and last position. We then add the chunk data string to the prompt string, which forms the entire prompt with the information Gemini needs. This will restrict Gemini to provide the answer based on the chunk data, and it will not use its own database. So the answer will be more specific to the user question based on the information obtained from our knowledge database. Finally, we connect the blocks to complete the logic flow. We also connect the start with the first block. Now let us take a look at the entire chatbot. First, we ask the user to input his question. We capture the entire user reply and store it in the question variable. In the next JavaScript block, we set the voice flow API key and the value of prompt. In the functions block, we pass to the function with the argument containing input variables of the API key and the user question. The output data of the function is saved in the variable of chunks, which contain the information we want Gemini to use. In the next JavaScript block, we concatenate the prompt and the chunk data to complete the entire prompt, which will be sent to Gemini. In the Gemini API block, we have entered the URL, API key, and headers information. We will need to put the prompt in the role model parts, so Gemini will take the prompt and provide the answer according to the instruction. It is better to put single quotation marks and do not forget the curly brace brackets surrounding the prompt variable. The second role user part is needed. If you delete it, it will not work. But it does look redundant. I will show you that I put a very simple prompt, which I have tested and worked okay. However, if you have a better solution, please leave a comment and let us know. Here, I put my simple prompt, which reads, please find question using the provided information. I know it sounds silly, but it works. Again, please leave a comment if you have a better solution or idea. Anyway, we will use this data structure in the body section and pass it to Gemini when making an API call. After Gemini returns the answer, we extract the data from the response and save it in the variable answer. The last text block simply contains the variable and displays the answer to the user. Now, we are ready to run a test on the entire chatbot. Let us click on the start button. I want to learn how to cycle. The first question is, what can I learn from a cycle class? We see the API call has been successful, and Gemini returns the answer. Cycle power, improve fitness and performance goals for strength, speed, and stamina. Cycle beats ride, non-traditional rhythm ride focusing on vibe, rhythm, and music. Cycle power, standing balance work for stability, coordination, and lower body strengthening. That looks pretty good. Next, we are going to add two buttons for the user to click so the conversation can continue if the user wants to. Let us drag a button block and drop it beneath the last text block. We enter continue for the first button. Click the button to add the second button. And we enter end conversation. For the first button, we add an action of go to block. We select home, then the first block named new block 3. For the second button, we add an action of end to end the conversation. After this, we have a loop and the user can continue the conversation to ask more questions. Next, let us go to the knowledge base. I am interested in personal training. Let us click here and take a look at the information on this web page. On the right, we can see the chunks generated by VoiceFlow. 
Each chunk can be converted into a numerical representation, which is called a vector. The question vector is searched against the chunks by a similarity score, and the chunks with the most similar number are returned. Let us go back to our chatbot and click the start button. This time, my question is, what can personal training benefit me? The Gemini answer is, Personalized fitness plans tailored to your goals and needs. Improved strength, muscle mass, metabolism, and weight control. Specialized training for specific sports and post-rehabilitation. Enhanced endurance and energy levels. Fun and supportive workout environment. Let us click the continue button. We input the question, what classes do you provide? And we can see the answer from Gemini, which I think is pretty good. Now let us click the button to end the conversation. This wraps up today's video. We have built a very simple demo chat bot using the example function to fetch chunks from the knowledge base and send the data and prompt to Gemini. Gemini returns the answer according to the instruction and the information. The whole process is free and does not consume tokens, which may be applied to many scenarios. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.